Good evening, everyone. Good evening, at least where I am right now, it's evening. I know we're tuning in from different locations. So we're about to get started. I hope everyone has been able to get into this meeting. We are about to start. This is the Wife and Waiting Masterclass, and I am so excited to have you here. My wife and waiting sisters will also be in the house. I'm going to ask you sisters to come through with the fire very soon. Um, that's our logo in wife in waiting. Now, today's masterclass is on life lessons to help you choose a partner for today and always. I'm going to be taking you on this. So who is this training for? Right? Who is this training for? It's for you when you keep attracting emotionally unavailable men. You don't know why you are not married yet. Now, let me know if this resonates with you at all. You don't know how to identify the right one. You are engaged, but you're not too sure you really want to marry him. You're not too sure about it. You don't want to marry the wrong one. You have this fear of getting it wrong then you are in the right place. This masterclass is tailor-made for you. This training is not for you if you are not a Christian, right? This training is only for Christian ladies. Um, if you know anything about our organization, we focus on Christian relationships. So if you are not a Christian, this training is not for you. If you are married, this training is not for you. If you are in a healthy relationship, a healthy emphasis on healthy relationship, this training is not for you, right? Now, what's my promise to you? My promise to you in this Wife in Waiting Masterclass is simple. I will deliver as much value as humanly possible in the next 90 minutes, so we shouldn't take longer than 90 minutes. I will share with you real life examples of how these strategies that I'm about to show you have been applied regularly by our wife in waiting sisters in the wife in waiting sisterhood to prepare our sisters for marriage. And I'm going to help you know why you are finding it hard to attract the right man for you. That is my promise to you. And this is what you can do for me in return. I want you now to close all tabs on your computer or your laptop or anything that's distracting you on your phone so that you can give me your full attention for the next 90 minutes. I want you to keep your phone on silent. Anything that you know will catch your attention, just put it away for now so that we can fully concentrate. Get your notepad, get your pen, get ready to take some notes. Make sure you have shared this link with a sister friend, anyone that you feel would need this information. Make sure you share it with them to join because we're about to begin this masterclass. So what are we gonna learn today? Today you're gonna learn major mistakes you're making with dating. You're also gonna learn why you find it difficult to date with discernment. And you're also going to learn why you always all the time, you always find yourself ending up in toxic relationships, toxic situationships. Now, I don't want you to rush off, so make sure you wait until the very end of this masterclass. And we should be done in 90 minutes or, or less. I have a bonus just for you. And our bonus is a sneak peek into what the Wife in Waiting devotional will be right? And you're going to see this at the end of the masterclass. You're going to have a sneak peek into our first edition of the Wife in Waiting devotional. Now, the Wife in Waiting devotional is a devotional tailor-made for women that are being made ready for marriage. And in this devotional, I discuss sex, boundaries, exes, relationships. So you definitely want to stay till the very end so I can share with you a link to view a couple of pages of our devotional. Now, this is only if you're here live. If you happen to be watching after this live, you will not have access. Great. Before we start, 
let me introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Tolu Falode. I'm your friendly Christian relationship counselor. I've helped single safe women like yourself over the past five years leave toxic relationships and step into godly marriages. I'm also the founder of the Wife in Waiting Sisterhood, where we prepare women to step fully into a God ordained marriage. Now, you're definitely going to meet some of our amazing sisters. If you hear me say sisters, this is what we call ourselves in Wife in Waiting because we're truly family. You're going to meet some of them this evening in the course of this masterclass. You can also find my relationship articles and my relationship tips on Bella Ninja and publications like Genevieve Nigeria. And you can also check out my work on Instagram at Fan the Flame, where I share dating tips. We have approximately 18,000 followers on Fan the Flame. And you can, if you prefer video content, you can check out our work on YouTube at Tolu Falode, where we have over 3,000 subscribers. Now, all these platforms contain more information about godly dating tips to get you prepared for marriage. But I want to give you a bit of a backstory in case you don't know that much about me. I wasn't always a relationship counselor. Now, this picture was taken at some point when I was in a toxic relationship in 2014. At this point in this picture, I kind of knew I wasn't happy, but I wasn't ready to leave, so I was stuck. And I know a lot of you can identify those emotions. Um, I purposely chose this picture because it shows that I was dealing with a lot of pain. If you look closely, you can see I clearly wasn't happy. I was really trying to smile, but I was not happy. I was not happy at all. <laughs> so at this point, I was in a toxic relationship. This was sometime in 2014. And I left because I was being taken for granted, right? How many of you can identify with that emotion when you always feel like the, the man is taking you for granted? You feel like he's wasting your time. I remember feeling frustrated at him, but I was also frustrated at myself because I didn't understand why I was allowing and permitting him to treat me this way. And I remember I was afraid of what it meant to be single. And I know a lot of you can identify with that, the fear of being single, the fear of letting go of this relationship or should i call it a situation or this guy that you happen to be talking to quote unquote because you're afraid and i also remember i felt confused you know the relationship started out fine and then it suddenly became something else and i know this is a common emotion as well confusion as to how someone that was giving you the time giving you the attention suddenly doesn't have your time at all, doesn't want anything to do with you at all. So I was confused about how that happened and how to make the relationship work. And all of this just made me feel stuck. I just felt stuck, like what is going on? What is the next step? Why did we get to this place? What am I supposed to do with this? So can anyone relate? I'm gonna share, I'm gonna look through the comments quickly. I just wanna see how, anyone else is saying yes i can definitely relate with this um i remember being in a toxic situation ship or i'm currently in one i feel stuck frustrated okay someone has said yes awesome so i know okay good so i know that this is a common emotion um so we're all on the same page awesome so we're all on the same page it's totally relatable i'm seeing that a lot great so this was the point I was at, right? This is why today I'm passionate about helping single saved women like yourself stop that toxic cycle of toxic relationships and start dating with discernment without the same pain, without the same struggle and hassle because that place is not fun at all. <laughs> it is not a fun place to be. I don't want any of you going through that. I don't want that to happen to you. That is why today I'm really passionate about helping single saved women like yourself stop this cycle. And this picture, you'll see it quite a bit, was taken at our event um, where I was sharing with some other godly ladies about what it means to be in a godly relationship. So I've, I've been doing this for a while. I mean, I've been doing this for roughly five years now, right? Now, this is why wife in waiting is such an important part of our mission. 
because we take the mandate to prepare single save women for a godly marriage very seriously. We take it very seriously. Okay. So let's talk about mistakes. Let's get into this. Now that we're acquainted, I feel like I am ready to share with you all. And I definitely feel if you are at this point in this meeting, you want to make sure you give me your full attention, right? Because we are getting in right now. We're going to talk about specifically the top three mistakes that keep saved women like you stuck in toxic relationships. Okay, we're going to explore that and why it keeps you stuck. I hope you have your notepad and your pen ready because I keep saying it, we're getting started now. I don't want you to miss a single thing. This is the first mistake we're going to deal with. You date based on where you are instead of where you are going. That is the first common mistake that is stopping you from being in a position to meet the right man. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, what it means is because you're so stuck on where you are right now, you find yourself attracting time wasters. And I know this resonates with you. You're attracting time wasters. You know John or, um, or James that keeps going and coming like a ghost. He just <laughs> goes and comes out of your life anyhow, anytime, any place, however he wants. As if you are some sort of you know, um, access that he can just come in and go out as he pleases. Or maybe it's being guy that promises he likes you, you know, he wants to date you, he's, he wants to be consistent with you, but he's still inconsistent till tomorrow. He, he's not changing. You've given him so many chances to change and he's still wasting your time. So you've noticed that you are attracting time wasters. That means you are dating based on where you are instead of where you are going. You also find yourself attracting men that are fond of taking advantage of you. Amen. <laughs> you are attracting men that are fond of taking advantage of you. You know the ones that only remember your number when they want to ask for money or when they need someone to talk to or they just, they just send you a random text during the holidays. How are you doing? What is going on? I haven't heard from you in a while. Those men that are fond of taking advantage of your time, your patience, your resources, you are dating based on where you are instead of where you are going. You are also attracting men that are not ready to commit. You're not attracting men that want commitment. These are men that even struggle with admitting that you are dating, even if you have been talking to this guy. And in some cases, let's be honest, sleeping with him. You've been having sex with him for a couple of months. Or is it the men that claim they will leave their girlfriends for you or they just came out of a relationship and are not ready for commitment, quote unquote? This is what happens when you date based on where you are instead of where you are going. This is exactly the category of men that you find yourself attracting. Okay, now. If you continue making this mistake of dating based on where you are instead of where you are going, you are gonna start thinking some very dangerous thoughts. You are gonna start thinking thoughts that will prevent you from meeting the right man because you are gonna start thinking, I'm just not good enough to attract a good quality man. I mean, why else do I keep attracting men that are wasting my time? Why else do, does does Benga or James or Paul or Peter or whoever keep calling me only during the holiday season? I, I must not be good enough. Maybe it's me. That's a very dangerous thought. The second danger here is you're going to start thinking, maybe my standards are too high. My standards must be too high. There's no other explanation to this. I don't understand why I keep attracting men that are wasting my time, if not for the fact that my standards must be too high. And then you may also find yourself thinking, maybe I should just date him. Maybe I should just manage him like that. I need to lower my expectations some more. Maybe because I keep meeting all these men, it's definitely my expectations are too high. Let me just date this man. Actually, 
you are completely wrong about all of this. But because you're so stuck on where you are, that you've lost sight of where you are going, and that is controlling who you date and how you date, these look like the only answers that make any sense. It doesn't look like anything else makes sense. But when you stop making these mistakes, this is what's going to happen. This particular mistake, when you start dating from where you are going instead of where you are, what's going to happen is you stop attracting time wasters. You'll find that time wasters, you don't even have their time. You'll start to enjoy the process of being prepared for marriage. What I mean by this is you'll start to focus more on what exactly you are called to do in marriage and how your husband looks like. And you are not interested in some guy that is promising you the trophy of being his girlfriend or one of his many side chicks. You are just not interested. You will become aware of your value because of this. Okay, your value becomes more obvious to you. You will learn how to take your time so you don't attract the wrong men. You'll stop dating for, you'll stop dating for quantity and you'll start learning how to date for quality. Okay? Now, what's also going to happen is you will start to recognize high-value men and attract them. You will also know easily when you are looking at the right man or the wrong one. That is what is going to happen in this space when you stop making this mistake. It's not going to happen if you don't stop. You're going to still be in this same position, right? Now, I'm going to introduce you to some of our wife and waiting sisters. The first wife and waiting sister I want to introduce you all to is our very own Eni. That's what we call her, Eni Yola. Now, Eni is in the tech space, and she's an active member of our sisterhood, and we just absolutely love her. So I wanted to show you what a wife and waiting sister has to say about how we tackle this. As Eni says, if you want a group that almost feels like a partner that God wants for you, then join this group. The group she's referring to is our sisterhood, wife and waiting. It's a constant source of refreshing for my spirit and my mind. And this is because in wife and waiting, we are constantly, every single day, because we meet every day, we are constantly preparing you to think for where you are going in marriage. So you know the type of men to date and how to recognize them easily. That is what we do in Wife in Waiting on a consistent basis. So you will not find yourself in a situation where you are dating based on where you are, which is very dangerous. Okay. Now, I want to show you the second mistake you're making. The second mistake you are making is you're too afraid to trust God and wait. So you settle without even knowing it. You don't even know you're settling. And I'm going to break this down because I really want you to catch this. You don't even know you are settling. Now, what this means is you qualify men for the wrong reasons because you think he's more spiritual than I am. So he must be the right one, right? I mean, he knows the Bible. He prays. He's attractive. So he must be the right one. He's the first man to agree to wait for sex. So he must be my husband, right? He comes from a good family. He has a stable background financially. He's well put together. He dresses well. You know, he's emotionally stable. He respects me. I've never met a man more qualified. So it's okay for me to date him, right? That is so dangerous. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Because you are leading with your emotions. You are leading with your emotions. You are not even factoring the spiritual element here. And that's what we do a lot in Wife in Waiting. You, you are leading with your emotions and forget how to listen to what God is trying to show you. You get lost in how financially stable he is, that you miss the fact that he is not even a Christian. You think you can change him. You get lost in how much more spiritual he is than you, and you miss the fact that he has a temper or he's disrespectful because you're not paying attention. You're not letting God show you. You feel he's the right one, so you don't want what God has to offer you. 
even if it is the right one, what I mean by that is, even if God is saying yes, you don't know because you are not paying attention. You are going with your feelings. What happens is you end up in relationships filled with confusion and lack of direction as a result of this. You move before you hear God because you're too impatient to listen. And this leads you to settle out of ignorance for the wrong man. That looks like he's the right one. And if you're familiar with our, you know, our teaching and wife in waiting, we're very clear on this. We're very clear on this, okay? If you're familiar with our teaching and wife in waiting, we're very clear on the fact that you qualify men just based on what you are seeing, not what God is showing you. In fact, this leads, links directly to our wife and waiting topic this month where we are talking about, are you ready and willing to accept a man as the head of your home today? That's actually our topic for this month. Because what, what is so dangerous about this mistake, what is so powerfully potent, very dangerous about this mistake, is you settle without knowing it. That is so dangerous. A lot of women wake up in their marriages after they have settled. And it becomes a living reality. That is the danger of this mistake. You settle without knowing it. You don't even know how to submit. That's why we're dealing with submission and wife in waiting this month. And let me tell you something else. You find yourself attracting men that seem spiritually sound. The spiritually sound man, he knows the Lord, he serves in church, he's amazing, but you're not attracted to him. You're not physically attracted to him. And what happens is this, you start thinking, all men that are scriptural and spiritual, they are not attractive. Oh, I don't want a godly man. I won't be, I won't be attracted to him. Oh, I'm not interested in men in the church. They are not attractive. Meanwhile, what is actually happening is you are putting yourself in a position where you are qualifying men based on your own emotions. That is what you are attracting. You're attracting men that aren't emotionally or physically attractive to you. You're attracting men based on your own emotions. When you lead with fear, you can't have what God wants to give you by faith. So by default, you're attracting men that seem to be spiritually sound, but are not attractive to you because you are not positioned where God wants you to be. And because of that, you start thinking that all men that are spiritual and scriptural are not attractive. Or at least the ones you don't find attractive are the ones that are attracted to you. If they don't even approach you, they're just attracted to you. You also, let, let me tell you something. You, you can't expect to have the peace of God in a relationship that, that is not of God. No matter what you do, no matter how many prayers you've prayed, how much fasting you fasted. Trust me, I, I once tried attaching scripture to a bad relationship. That is before, that is that relation, um, the relationship I referred to at the beginning. And it, it just did not work right? That is what happens when you are stuck and confused. You try and bring God into a situation that he was never a part of. That is what happens here. Okay. Now, if you continue making this mistake, <laughs> you are going to start think thinking some very terrible thoughts. You're going to start thinking singleness must mean loneliness, right? Because you are too scared to draw close to God by trusting him. You, you know, it's just going over your head. Trust God. Trust God. I don't want to trust God. Let me just do it my own way. So you are too scared to draw close to God by trusting him. And that's the only way you can learn to trust him. It's like any friend. I don't trust you if I don't know you. I only trust you based on my relationship with you. Right? So you become lonely and you start looking. Okay? You start looking at that man you don't even find attractive as your husband. That's what's going to happen. You start looking at that man you don't find attractive as your husband because you're thinking to yourself, uh, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the one that is getting in my own way. Maybe that's what's going on here. And this is so dangerous because you're going to start thinking God cannot be trusted to give me a man I find attractive because you don't even know what trusting him looks like. And in Wife in Waiting, we're very intentional about showing you this through our constant prayers, dating tips, guest speakers, and books in our community. We are very consistent on this issue, making sure that you learn to hear God on your own. 
you think all men want to have sex before marriage not understanding that those are the only men you just happen to be attracting because you're not ready to rely on god it has nothing to do with all men it's just the men you happen to be attracting you start thinking the man god has for me is not good enough so you find it even harder to believe there's a right man for you, not to talk about even meeting him. Meeting him doesn't even cross your mind because you, you, don't, you, you don't believe he exists. You don't believe it's a possibility. And even worse, you start comparing your relationship status to all your friends and family members. And that is where you find yourself lonely in your singleness. That is why you find yourself at that point of loneliness. Okay. Now, let me know in the comments if this is resonating with you so far. Just want to see if this is resonating with you. Okay, I can see some comments here saying, so true, true. I'm seeing accurate, awesome. I'm seeing it is. Yes, it is. Absolutely great. Good. So we're all on the same page. Now, let me show you what happens when you stop making this mistake. You learn to guard your heart. So you know how to attract men that are spiritually, physically, and emotionally attractive to you. I'm very careful with this because I want you to understand attraction is not just physical. It's spiritual, emotional, and physical. And if you're familiar with, with, um, with my you know, dating tips and relationship tips, you, you, you will know that I say a lot about this because it's very important that you get this. You know easily. When you stop making this mistake of not trusting God, when you start knowing how to trust God and why you should trust him for yourself, you will know easily and very quickly when a man is serious or not. In fact, wife and waiting sisters, we do this all the time. You bring, you know, maybe you're dating a guy or you're in some sort of dilemma. We share it with the sisters and the sisters will all tell you their mind based on the fact that we're all single, saved sisters. Now, when I say single, I mean the sisters are waiting for marriage it doesn't mean they are not in a relationship or you know they are not seeing someone no singleness is before marriage until you are married so you know easily when a man is serious or not okay because you know how god speaks to you and what to look out for you date with discernment that is the power of learning to trust god that is when discernment takes over and it's so powerful dating with discernment uh, in fact i don't know how else you should date you date with the sermon and purposefully because you are no longer afraid of singleness. And this is why wife and waiting is so powerful. There is an army of sisters to talk to every single day to remind you what you are waiting for. And you can just share with them. Okay. You recognize as well the right man for you quickly and easily because you know what it looks like to be with the right man. Like I said, our sisters are single in relationships. They are, it's not singleness just by virtue of you're not dating anyone no singleness as in they could be in relationships and we even have we've had sisters that are engaged and have gotten married so you have a lot of experience to pull from to be able to see a situation that may be similar to your own now at this point i want to show you another wife and winning sister i want to introduce you to chidima we call her chidi chidi is a wife and waiting sister she has a background in law um, and here's what she has to say about the sisterhood. She says, <laughs> and I'm very, <laughs> I'm very, um, this emoji came out looking funny here, but I just wanted to really capture the way our sisters talk. So I did not change. I did not alter any of their um, experiences in the group. As Chidi says, you get to network here. <laughs> you form bonds outside of the group too, you know. There is also the love for emojis. Yes, we, we love our emojis. So come prepared. Let's not forget prayers for one another, Zoom meetings, books and movie reviews and games, invited guests, and so much more. Now, like I said, the emojis are a staple of our community. We, we love our memes. We love our stickers. Um, I just wanted to make sure you see exactly what, they, what our sisters are saying, like Chidi here. Um, and... Emojis are kind of our thing in wife in waiting. Stickers are kind of our thing. <laughs> but here, here is what I want you to understand. You have a network of sisters. You have a network of sisters. And we pray together. There are Zoom meetings, like Chidi has said. We have book and movie reviews. We have game nights. We invite guests. 
there's just so much to make it very difficult for you to settle for lack of a better way of putting it and easier for you to trust and rely on God because you have an army of sisters that are right behind, right beside you rather. Now, I want to move on to the third mistake you're making. The third mistake you are making is you don't allow yourself to heal from failed relationships. You don't allow yourself to heal from situationships. Okay. Does this resonate with anyone? Have you been in failed relationships? Have you been in situationships that you are constantly struggling? You are constantly dealing with, you know, how am I going to leave this man? How am I going to get him out of my head? How am I going to get over this situation? How is this going to turn around for me? Is this, is, is this something that we've dealt with? I can see, yes, I can totally relate. Yes, yes, awesome. So what I want you to really get here and how this is preventing you from meeting the right man is you are afraid that man was your best option. He was so kind. He was so loving. He was so nice. And so on and so forth. Meanwhile, you are forgetting he treated you disrespectfully. He wasn't attentive in the relationship. He, he cheated numerous times. You forget all of that. All you remember is, oh, he must have been my best option, whether it's that ex or that single pastor that you dated or that pastor that claims to be single, let me put it like that, or that man at your gym or in the office you went on a couple of dates with. You start thinking, oh, that was my best chance. I should have just managed him. So what do you do in that situation? You decide, let me just leave this door open let's just stay in touch not a bad idea let's just get you know i'm just going to be touching base with him just checking in on him let me see how he's doing let me see how he's um how how he's handling this whole um you know situation whether it's a new job or a new location you make excuses to stay in touch this is such a bad idea <laughs> It is such a bad idea. In fact, in Wife in Waiting, we have a sticker. The sticker is um, one of our, one of our, one of our um, signature stickers that says, block and delete, sis. What are you waiting for? Because this is the exact situation that warrants that particular type of sticker. You don't want to stay in touch. You want to heal. You can't heal from a wound you keep picking at. If you keep picking at the wound and picking at the wound, it is never going to heal. Picking at the wound in this case is you staying in touch. It's you reaching out to him. How are you? It's you saying, oh, I'm going to be around for Christmas. It's you saying, let's just meet up to catch up. It's you saying, you know, I don't really understand this, this software. I need his help. He's an expert. He's an IT expert. Let me just call him. That, 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 that is what you're doing. You are literally enabling yourself to stay stuck. There is no way you are going to be able to see a good thing if the right man in this situation. That's why in Wife we say block and as in it's a sticker, we, we don't joke with it. <laughs> block and delete. What are you waiting for? Because we are intentional with making sure our sisters move forward. And the danger of this is you are afraid you won't meet someone better. So you settle and stay stuck. You, that's how situationships happen. You may have dated this man and all of a sudden you are his side chick or you are his, you know, friends with benefits or, you know, you're not even sure where you both are because you left the door open. So you settle and stay stuck. And then you try and change him. No, I can change him. You know, he has all these other amazing qualities. I can make him go to church. I can make him take our relationship more seriously. I can make him, you know, pay more attention to me. I can make him choose me. Now becomes a competition. I can make him choose me over his new girlfriend. Why? Because you left that door open, which is why we say block and delete. <laughs> it says, ask wife and waiting sisters, block and delete, block and delete. We don't joke with it. And what happens with this is you are afraid of starting all over again. Amen. You are afraid of starting all over again. You're afraid you won't meet someone better. So what you are doing is settling and staying stuck, hoping, let this man notice me again. Let this man pay attention to me again. 
let him, you know, come back to me. You start dreaming all this, you know, you start listening to love songs, all these scenarios. Yes, he will come back, all these movies, you start relating. Such a dangerous road. Such a dangerous road. You see what I'm saying? Can you girls, can you ladies rather relate? You see what I'm saying? This is exactly what happened. This is, and it's so dangerous. We tackle this head on in wife and waiting. It is not accepted. We have a sticker, block and delete, block and delete. And if you unblock again, you let, you have the sisterhood right there beside you and you let us know. And we, we remind you why this man was such a bad idea in the first place. That is why we are accountable to each other. So the mistake here is you are putting yourself in a very dangerous mindset of, I'll never get over my ex. I mean, if I was going to get over him, I would have gotten over him by now. So he must be the one. Yes, he's my husband. Yes, the Lord revealed to me in a dream. Yes, you know, he got, I got along so well with his sisters and his friends. I mean, we're such an amazing couple. Yes, yes, he's my husband. He's the one. That's the danger. And then when that man marries someone else, you become stuck for three years. You cannot think again. You cannot reason. You start money. You become a monitoring spirit. You start going up to his page. You start, you know, checking up on his wife. She's not even that fine. You know, she's this, she's that. You start forming a coalition, a circle of sisters to 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 shame, you know, his to make you feel better, which we don't even encourage. We don't even encourage that in our in our sisterhood because we understand that it is making you stuck. And that's the danger here. You chase, and what you don't even understand you're doing is you're chasing away good men. You are literally repelling good men. You are repelling them from your life. That is the problem. It's a big problem. That's why you are still, you know, stuck. Why, why you are still struggling with knowing, am I single? Am I not single? Because you're repelling good men and you are attracting the time wasters. You're attracting the men that like to take advantage. The men that are attracted to hurt, to pain. That is what you're attracting in this place. You chase away good men, men that are actually looking for women that are free emotionally. You repel them by your attitude, your character, your personality, because this hurt changes you. It makes you a, more, a, a, a less confident woman. It makes you um, more insecure. It makes you doubt yourself. And those are qualities that a good man will not be attracted to. A good man, think about it. You don't want a man that is insecure, that is not confident, that is not over his ex. So why do you think a good man will want any of that in his own woman? And that is exactly what you're doing in this space. That is why it is so dangerous. And you start comparing all men to your ex, you know. Oh, you know, he's, he's not, he's, he doesn't talk to me the way um, um, James used to talk to me. He doesn't, he doesn't call me the way, um, you know, Paul or Peter or whoever used to call me. You compare all men to your ex. And because your ex is not even a real person, it's a figment of, the, of your imagination. Your ex wasn't that great, let's be honest. You compare all men to a figment of what looks like an ideal situation. So no man can live up to it. So no man is qualified, even the good ones. That's what I mean by you repel them. And then you find yourself in this cycle of trying to go back to your ex, of trying to reason with God, of trying to reason with your family and friends. And this is how you become stuck and frustrated. And this is why you start thinking, I'm not good enough. That is the danger of this space because you are going to become, you're going to become toxic to be around. Okay. But when you stop doing this, when you stop making this mistake, you move on easily. Easily. What I mean by this is when you stop going back and forth with your ex, when you apply a wife in waiting mantra of block and delete, the wife in waiting sisters will tell you in the comments with their fire, block and delete, block and delete. <laughs> when you apply that, you move on easily. You date freely. You start to attract high value men, men that are attracted to a confident woman because you have become confident. You have become free. You are no longer imprisoned by your pain. You've acknowledged that the relationship may have been you know, it may have been good, but it wasn't great. It wasn't godly. It wasn't of God. And you've moved on. And that is healing. That is wholeness. And that is what is attractive to the right man. And you learn to lead with your value. You start to find 
wholeness in your singleness. And let me tell you, that is so powerful to find wholeness in your singleness. And I'll tell you one reason why. You can meet your husband because of this. Because wholeness in your singleness means you are now emotionally available. You are no longer triggered. If you hear a song that you and your ex used to play together, play together, you can even laugh, remember, and move on. You are no longer triggered. When you hear people say, oh, you know, why are you still single? Why didn't you just manage that guy? You are able to heal because you are now whole. You are able to smile because using the analogy again of a wound, if somebody taps you there, it has healed. So you don't even feel it, right? That is what happens when you stop making this mistake. And I want to introduce you to our final wife in waiting sister of this evening, which is Suzanne. We call her Medan. Suzanne is in the media industry. She's in media. And this is what she has to say about our sisterhood. This is what Suzanne, or Medan as we call her, has to say about our sisterhood. I enjoy the hot, that box is fire, by the way. Suzanne put fire there. I enjoy the hot prayers in the community. It's comforting to know that we are settling matters in the spirit realm. We don't joke with that. You can ask any wife and any sister. We don't play with the spirit. Um, I enjoy the guests that come on board to discuss various topics, ranging from relationships to fitness. We get to ask a lot of questions too. And that is very true. In fact, when we have guests over, I, I'm always afraid to, to let the guests go because the sisters are just like asking questions and asking questions. So this is what we do in the sisterhood. Um, and this is how we make sure that you are positioned to meet the right man. Now, I also want to show you exactly why this is important for you. I've told you what you need to stop doing. But then you may be asking, what do I do instead? Okay, I know I need to let my ex go. I know I need to let go of the situationship. I know I need to, you know, start dating from where I'm going instead of where I am. I understand that now, but what do I do instead? Well, let me show you what you do. It starts with our sisterhood in wife in waiting. That's where our sisterhood comes in. It's a non-judgmental sisterhood that prepares you for marriage. We are a sisterhood that we place emphasis on iron sharpening iron. That's Proverbs 27, 17. That's what the wife in waiting sisterhood is about. We're non-judgmental sisters that prepare you for marriage. We have accountability mixed with knowledge, mixed with our sisters that prepare you and make you ready for marriage. This is going to help you understand what the right man looks like and why this man is the right person for you. And I'm going to show you how. With accountability, you get clear on who you're waiting for so you know the right man easily. You learn from the experiences of the sisters. You get practical advice and tips from other sisters. Now, I want to show you what one of our sisters has said. It has given me a judgment-free zone to share and hold me accountable. It really gave me a community of sisters, and I made a personal new friend from it. The support lifts the spirits, tips and experiences shared are valuable. The struggles shared are real. Practical solutions and advice. It's been a short time. This was from one of our sisters at the time she was new, but couldn't have come at a better time in my life. Now, why is it important to have accountability? It's important for you to have accountability so that you can get prepared for marriage. You have a judgment-free zone to ask all your questions. And I mean anything. You can ask the sisters anything. We discuss sex, discuss marriage, we've discussed children, we've discussed in-laws, fitness, everything and anything. You get to share your dating experiences and get tips from the community of sisters. You get clear on the next step, the next step that suits you best. This is so important because you not only learn to wait patiently, and when you are feeling frustrated, wife and waiting sisters are there for you. We keep each other accountable. You learn to date purposefully, not just for the fun of it, you know, 
the danger with dating is when you start doing it for the fun of it, you are not going to find yourself in the right place. You're not going to find yourself attracting the right person. And that's why we place emphasis on getting you clear on any issues. Just ask any of the sisters. We literally, the, the group is open every single day. So the reason most people won't do this, and this may be a reason that comes to your mind. Oh, I can just ask Deola, or I can ask Bolu. You know, a friend may come to your mind. You can, oh, I just ask my mom. But what if you're afraid of how they will react? What if Deola or Bolu looks up to you? Um, you know, they know that, oh, you've taken on this journey of, of, of being um, a woman that is walking in Christ. Um, and they are looking up to you and you're afraid to tell them, I, I had sex. I don't know how else to, I don't know how, I don't know who else to turn to. Um, I'm struggling with sexual sin. You're afraid of what that would do to them. That's where this sisterhood comes in. You just tell, you tell us in the community. We don't judge you. You, can, you may be thinking, oh, I can do this on my own, but you don't have all the knowledge. The wife in waiting is a sisterhood. I've shown you Chidi that's from a legal background, any in the tech space, Susan is from the media background. You don't have, you know, you don't have just one perspective. You have a, 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 a multiple, um, multiple perspectives to choose from. And you may think, oh, I can just talk to my pastor. But what if you just made a covenant with your pastor? You know, some churches you go to and they say, let's pray for you. And then they tell, okay, from here on out, you're not going to struggle with this sin again. How are you going to go back to that pastor to discuss that issue without thinking about it twice and editing the story? There are no edits in Wife in Waiting. You tell us as it is. We are all sisters and we're ready to support you. Here's what Eni says. This is not a group of mean girls. And that's true, we are not. Thank goodness for female intuition. I give you three days. You see why everyone else feels safe enough to share freely. No one judges. No one is deputy Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we don't have that. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is there, but we're not deputy Holy Spirit. And this is why wife in waiting sisters are the best people for this. No judgments, a whole lot of truth. Now, there's knowledge in the community. This means you have access to direction on dating for marriage. You have a community of sisters to share your struggles with. You are, you are able to learn easily and quickly. When I say easily and quickly, we, it's, it's, it's a WhatsApp chat. This, these are all messages from WhatsApp. You are, you are able to learn very quickly from the sisters. And I share, you won't find messages I share with wife and waiting sisters anywhere else. Whether you go to Fan the Flame where we have 18,000 plus, um, nearly 18,000 followers, or YouTube, wife and waiting sisters have access to exclusive content that won't be available outside because we make content specifically based on what the sisters share. Now, this is what a wife and waiting sister says. I love that part she was referring to, when she says that part, she was referring to one of our messages that we share constantly on the group. I love that part that says that it's not my job to explain to a man that I'm his wife. How many of you have tried to do that? You've tried to explain to a man, I'm wife material. Um, you should wait for me to have, um, you should wait for marriage to have sex with me. That's what this sister is referring to. And that's one of the messages we shared in the group. He is the one to see my value. I've made that mistake before. As you can see, she's clearly sharing it with our sisters because we don't judge. I thought I could make him see it. God has always helped me with the sex part. I can easily let, let, I can easily let go if the guy wants to leave because I didn't give him sex. I am a wife in waiting. Amen. And I will definitely be guided by God to marry right. Full of wisdom. Thank you, Tolu. And that's because we, I share messages in the group on a constant and consistent basis. Now, let me show you why knowledge is important. It's important because you want to be clear on how to date for marriage. Like I said, this, is, this training, this masterclass is, is based on wife, or, or wife and waiting sisterhood. But more importantly, it's based on women that have come to a knowledge of Christ. So what we show you how to do is date for the purpose of a godly marriage. That is our mandate as a sisterhood. You want to be positioned properly. And the word literally says, my people that perish from lack of knowledge. To know where to position and how to position yourself, you need knowledge. Your mindset, Romans 12, verse 2. Your mindset needs to be transformed to attract the right men. And that is not a typo. 
I am saying the right men. One of these men will be your husband into your life. Your mindset needs to be transformed. If your mindset is not transformed, you will not be able to have that access because you don't believe it is for you. That is the truth. Okay. And there's a whole lot of truth in wife and waiting. The sisters know I do not joke with that. I will tell you as it is. Okay. And that is why this is so important. Now, let me show you what happens when you start to do this. You become equipped with practical knowledge. We don't give knowledge that lacks foundation. The way I share with wife and waiting sisters is practical knowledge for marriage. And I'll show you in just a bit some of the guest speakers we've had come to our WhatsApp group to share with us because obviously we want to make sure our sisters are well-rounded. You also, when you start doing this, when you start applying this knowledge that we share in Wife in Waiting, it changes the way you view your own perspective. You realize, I don't actually know that much. I don't actually, I didn't actually handle that situation the right way. And it also allows you to grow your understanding the right way for the right man. Now, why this is holding you back in the context of knowing your husband and being able to attract the right men into your life is you may decide, oh, you know, because we weren't attracted to each other on the first date, that means I shouldn't give him a chance. But when you come to the community and you share with us, we share different perspectives. You can hear a sister say, oh, you know, I met someone, we weren't really attracted to each other until after the first two, three dates. And that will change your perspective and allow you to be more open and receptive to that man. That's a practical way this community will benefit your dating life and help you to understand how to date in a more productive and practical way for the purpose of marriage. That is why knowledge is valuable. Now, most people won't do this. Most people won't think this is important because they think, oh, I can figure it out alone. Google is there. Google knows everything. I can just Google it or I'll, I'll just see how it goes, you know. I'll, I'll figure it out myself. I trust myself to know this. I trust myself to figure it out. But if you figure it out alone, it's going to take you longer. If you want to ask Google, the information is all over the place. Google, on the first page alone, Google will send you to so many places. If you want to see how it goes, at what cost? What is the point of putting yourself through that process of figuring it out and seeing how it goes when at the end of the day, you just think I shouldn't have done it in the first place? This is why Chidi says, I have learned a lot about boundaries, standards, and accountability. The books we read, we read, we read books in our sisterhood. The books we read teaches a lot on different things, honor, respect, humility, love, how to watch what we say to others, and much more. Now, this is where the sisterhood is important. It means you get clarity on what marriage means to you. The messages we share, we make sure that it is able to apply in your own life practically. You recognize a healthy relationship for you. Because, and I want to place emphasis on this. What is healthy for me may not necessarily be healthy for you. If, for instance, I need a partner that is extremely timely because maybe I'm a disorganized person. That is healthy for me. But if, for instance, you are a very organized person and you have a partner that is equally as organized, it may get on your nerves and it creates a toxic atmosphere. That is not healthy for you. So what we do in Wife in Waiting is we make you recognize a healthy relationship for you by hearing different perspectives. And this is what a sister says. I can't wait for tomorrow. This group has become such an integral part of my evenings. Thank you so much, my beautiful sisters, for being here. It feels like family here, men. Love you all. And that is very genuine. That is how wife and waiting sisters feel about each other. We genuinely do see each other as family. And the reason the sisterhood is so important is you date easily for marriage based on the content we share, the guest speakers we have, you are equipped with practical advice backed with the word. We know, you know better what to expect from relationships. You know, you're no longer ignorant. You may not have been in that situation. Say you've never been in a relationship with before, but you have a wife in waiting sister that is currently in a relationship or has had a relationship that didn't work out. You can draw from her experience so you don't make her mistake. And she'll be more than happy to share with you and also learn from you. 
That is the value of this community. Now, when you start walking with the sisterhood, you learn to share without fear of judgment. As sisters share freely, we're not afraid to share with each other because we don't judge. You get a quick reality check at literally at the tip of your fingertips. You just type the message, share it in the group, and we call out the sisters. Oh, we, you know, one of our sisters has an issue and everybody shares their opinion that is available. You have access to a family that won't judge you for making mistakes. We don't hold you on some sort of pedestal saying, oh, you know, like maybe your friend may hold you or your parents may hold you or even your pastor. We don't hold you on that pedestal because we understand that this journey is not particularly straightforward, right? Now, most people may not do this because they think, you know, it's too simple. It really can't be this simple to get access to advice and counsel from these sisters. I don't need any more advice. Um, you, or you may take direction for granted. I don't need direction. I can figure it out. That's why most people won't do this, which is an unfortunate presumption. Because if you think that you don't need any more advice, you don't need any more counsel, you're just welcoming more mistakes. If you take direction for granted, that means you don't really value the time it will cost you to make that mistake. That is the danger of this. Now, Menon says, Susan says, I enjoy the openness in our conversations because it allows us to share things we would normally not share. Emphasis on normally not share. Because wife and waiting sisters, what we share with each other, you may not necessarily be able to share it with your sister or your mother or your friend. And in doing this, we have formed a kindred spirit. We are learning from each other while being aware that where one person is standing is exactly where someone else has walked. And that is the value in this community. If you share an issue, a wife and waiting sister can say, oh, I remember when so-so and so happened, or I remember when my auntie did this, or you know, my friend had this experience. And you can't get access to that kind of information in a safe space that quickly. Now, these are some of the speakers that we've had in wife in waiting. I wanted to show you some of the speakers we've had. And obviously we're gonna have more speakers. It's something that we do in the community because we take your knowledge and understanding very seriously to position you for marriage in a godly fashion. We've had Samuel Olekomo who came to talk to us about the importance of physical attraction to keep love alive in marriage because we don't lie to our sisters. Yes, you know, we love you. You know, you, you, are, you, you know, you are beautifully and wonderfully made, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't keep yourself fit. A man is still a man. And Samuel came to talk to us about physical fitness and attraction in marriage. And then we had Ifai also come to talk to us about how can a woman respect her man before and after marriage? Because we noticed that women really struggle with understanding what respect means to a man. And as a Christian relationship counselor, I can tell you for a fact, men seriously value respect. I can tell you that from my experience, I can tell you from the work that I've done and from the people I've worked with. Men value experience in marriage. And that is why we had Ifai and come and share with the sisters on how a woman can respect her man, her husband, her fiance before and after marriage. And then we had the lovely Morenike who has been married for nearly 10 years, come and share with the sisters on how to deal with married life during the first five years of marriage, because the first five years of marriage are very crucial for any relationship. The first five years of marriage are the building blocks of a lasting marriage. So we really wanted to make sure the sisters had access to that information. And Morenike came to share with us on that. And these are just some of the amazing speakers that we have in our community. We also actively ask the sisters, where do you want us to talk more on? so that we can make sure that we are equipped as a community to provide access to that information for the sisters. For instance, Moreni Kerr that has been married for 10 years, you can ask her if you are in a relationship, a serious relationship. Sisters may, may you know, in that, in, in that particular um, episode that she came to share with us, we're asking all sorts of questions based on what they desire from their husband. And it changes your perspective because you are, go, you are, you are getting information from someone that is where you have never been yet. And that is very valuable because it may help save you a lot of heartache and it may make you understand what you need to do next. So this is what we've learned so far. We've learned the top three mistakes single safe women have made. And these are the mistakes I've shared with you. You date based on where you are instead of where you are going. It's a very dangerous mistake, like I've already said. You are too afraid to trust God and wait. So you settle without knowing it. You don't allow yourself to heal from failed relationships and situationships like I explained to you. And 
danger of this is your ex will move on, you know, and he will find other people and you will still be there pining and, and hoping that he will change his mind. No, we don't tolerate that in wife and waiting. But this is the position you can find yourself in. Or when you date based on where you are, you forget that you are even called to marriage. Your own is, let him just call me his girlfriend. Let him just, you know, let him just take me on a date. Let him just commit to me. And the danger of that is that man is not even qualified to be married to anyone. But because you are so distracted by the fact that you want his attention, you lose sight of where you are going, which is to the marriage God has called you to. And another danger, like I explained, is you're too afraid to trust God and wait. So you settle. And the danger of this is when you are settling without knowing it, which is even more dangerous, you find yourself in a marriage where you are not happy. You find yourself dating someone where you are not even finding him attractive. And that is what I've discussed with you all. So you are here today because of these reasons. You're tired of toxic relationships. You're just done. Like, I can't do it anymore. I'm tired of having my heart broken up and down. Anyhow, I'm just done. You're tired of toxic relationships. You want a simple solution to dating easily for marriage. You just want clarity. You know, you're tired of guesswork. Like, okay, so how does this work? How do I, what do I need to do different? You felt heartbreak too many times. In fact, you're currently in a situation, you're thinking, ah, Shebi, Sheon doesn't treat me with respect. Sheon is not a Christian. You know, Sheon um, has this ex, that, this woman he claims is, is his ex, quote unquote, that I'm not even sure if I'm the side chick or, you know, if he is actually talking to me and not talking to her. Heartbreak in many, many forms. People think heartbreak is just breaking up. No. Heartbreak is when a man chooses another woman over you and you've given him everything. Heartbreak is when you think a guy is interested in you and you find out that he's actually engaged to another woman. You've had heartbreak too many times and you are tired of it. You are ready to make a change. Now, wife in waiting is the place for me to help you get started. Okay. And this is very much a community of women. Um, it's an army of sisters, but this is the first place I can help you. Nothing I've shared with you today is theory or ideas. I was very intentional to make sure that you are able to practically apply the situation to your own circumstance. I also shared experiences of our wife and waiting sisters, NHD and Medan. These are all steps I have taken to help my sisters to get more clarity in dating for marriage. I don't have any advantages or special skills, there's just a powerful sisterhood that gives you direction on how to date in preparation for marriage. And wife in waiting is truly unique. It's not like other Christian groups that you may feel, you know, you have to deal with a lot of mean girls, like Annie said, or you may be in a community where you don't fully, you say something and the girls will use it to gossip against you or backbite you. That's not wife in waiting. Iron sharpens iron is our watchword, and we take it very seriously. Proverbs 27, 17. We hold you accountable. We give you the knowledge. We give you the information. We support you on the journey, and we are a sisterhood. Now, this is what you have now open to you. You have two options. You can take all this information that we've shared here, which I'm sure has been valuable to you, and you can figure it out yourself. You can decide to do that. You can decide to continue with that relationship, try and figure it out, try and work it out. You can do that. You're you very well within your rights to do that. Or you can get clarity in literally a minute by sharing it with the wife and waiting sisters. Instead of trying to figure out who can I talk to? How would I position this to my pastor? What would I say? You can just type in the group ladies, I need help with this, sisters, I need help with this, and have an army of sisters answer you. That is the other, that's the second option. So what would you achieve in wife in waiting? You achieve sisterhood, you get clarity, you get relationship tips from myself, from yours truly, um, you get prayers, we organize prayers um, on a consistent basis, and you also have access to guest speakers from different and diverse backgrounds. This is what some of our members have said. It makes me feel like I have sisters that I can talk, share things with, and listen to. Listen to that. She can talk, she can share, and she can also listen. Because that's important. You may be able to talk to your pastor, but you may not be able to share with him. You may be able to talk to your friend, but she may not listen to you. But in wifey waiting, you can talk, share, and be listened to. 
I feel like I have friends that I have not met and I would love to meet. Now, our sisters, we may not have met each other. In fact, some of our sisters have actually met each other um, off, the, off, off, the, off our chat, but we really feel like we know each other. We really do. And there's a strong bond in, in our sisterhood. It has pushed me to build a stronger relationship with the Lord. And another sister says, I now know that I wasn't just being weird. There are actually ladies going through similar battles. And this is why wifey waiting is so important. You are not alone. That battle you think is unique to you. A lot of the other sisters will be able to tell you, I actually went through that with this person. We pray about it. And I'm going to show you in a bit just some more of how we tackle these areas. You are not alone. You're not the only one. That is a lie of the enemy to isolate you so that you are vulnerable and easy to attack. For wife in waiting sisters, iron sharpens iron. We're all a, we're, it's an army of sisters. So if, if anybody's coming for you, it's all of us that are facing them. And that's why you understand that there are actually ladies going through similar battles. I don't have to lower my standards to find love. And these are some of our wife in waiting events. Just some of them, we hold sister fast. In fact, we have a sister fast later this month um, where we pray and fast our sisters. If we were to price that separately, that would be $20. That is just me giving an estimate because the sister fast are specifically tailored to grow you spiritually so that you are able to discern when God is talking to you. You can't stay in wife in waiting and not, not hear about God or know about God or become curious about God because we are literally a sisterhood that is based on the word of God with practical advice. We have our Moonlight Tales. What Moonlight Tales is, is an evening where we learn and share with one another. In Moonlight Tales, we learn and share with one another. Sisters share vulnerably and transparently, this is what happened with me and my ex. And the most interesting thing about our last Moonlight Tales event was all of us could relate, but we didn't know. And that was so interesting to me. All of us could relate, including myself. All of us could relate with the stories that the sisters were sharing. And it was just such an amazing experience because you realize I'm actually not alone. There are other sisters that have gone through this issue. So you are able to easily identify how to prevent it from happening with you. We have prayer conventions. Our prayer conventions are very powerful. We don't play with prayer conventions. They are intense prayers of intervention. These prayers last for three days. They are an intense affair. We fully, in fact, we go all in in the spirit. One of our prayer conventions was to break generational curses. And we pray. We, we seriously pray. And these prayers are anointed. They are directly received um, by the spirits. And we don't joke with them. We also have relationship tips that I share on a weekly basis as at this, as at this time. Relationship, um, relationship tips I share with the ladies on a consistent basis as at the time of this um, as at the time of this um, um, masterclass training it's on a weekly basis and this particular topic we're sharing this month is on are you ready and willing to accept a man as the head of your home today so i'm dealing with the sisters on submission while going all in on submission wife and waiting sisters can testify if you're in the in the comments make sure you come through with your fire emojis um, we've been dealing with submission amongst other topics because we talk on a various variety of issues if a sister is needing help with something, we focus on that. But I share with the sisters tips that you will not find anywhere else outside the community. And this is our book club. We have a book club, like I've explained to you all. We've read The Man God Has For You by Stephen Lavoisier. And we've also read 100 Reasons Why Sex Should Must Wait Until Marriage by Dr. Lukoya. Now, I wanted to show you how diverse our books are a book by Dr. Lukoya, a book by Stefan Lebossier. These are people from different backgrounds, obviously, um, and different um, anointing um, and mantles in the spirit because we want to make sure our sisters are well equipped. And we don't joke with our book readings as well. We ask each other, we, we analyze, we, you know, we go through the books together. That's our book club. So to join the sisterhood, what would it cost? To join the Wife and Waiting Sisterhood, by the way, it's closed in 24 hours. As at the time of this recording, this uh, our sisterhood closes tomorrow. Um, it's closed in 24 hours. If we were to estimate all we do, the relationship tips that I give specifically to the sisters um, in the group, the guest speakers that we have, 
the prayer sessions we organize, the fast we have, our daily conversations, our hangout events, the book club. That would be roughly $150. But the investment is just $14. That's literally 5,100 5, naira, I believe. That is the investment as of now to join Wife in Waiting per month. It's, it's 5,100 naira per month to remain a member. And you get access to all of this. You get access to relationship tips from myself. You get access to guest speakers, powerful prayers. You have a sisterhood. If you had a bad day, just wait till our group opens and come and talk to us. If you have a situation with your boyfriend, wait till the group opens and talk to us. Every single day we are there. We have events. Like I've shown you some of our events. We have a book club as well. And it's literally $14 a month. That is less than one full day's meal for you to be a member of our community, to be a sister. Now, you will check the chat box now. IJ, who is one of our wife in waiting sisters, Ijoma, will share the link now to join the sisterhood. IJ will share it in the chat box now so that you are able to join the sisterhood. Now, what I want you to understand is this sisterhood is particularly unique. And it's unique because we're a diverse group of sisters from different backgrounds. Um, and we have a mandate to make sure that you are properly and fully prepared for a godly marriage. That, that's not a group you'll find anywhere else than wife in waiting. And it's just $14 a month to be a member. This is just like a roundup of what exactly we offer in the community, which is our book club. The Man God Has For You is one of the books we've read. Our speakers, like I explained, Ifine and Moreni care shared on marriage and respecting a man before and after marriage and what our general sisterhood is about. Is about. Like this sister says, it makes me feel like I have sisters that I can talk to, share things with, and listen to. Like I said, IJ will put the um, link in the comments. She would have shared it now. And she has shared it. If anyone is wondering, how do I join Wife in Waiting? Go to the chat box and you will see the link to join Wife in Waiting Sisterhood. So I'm going to take questions now. I'm going to take, let's see, how many minutes do we have left? I believe I've kept my promise. We are under 19 minutes. So I'm going to take three questions and then um, we're going to start rounding up. So the first question I'm going to take is a question that I got before this um, class started. So if you have any questions, make sure you leave it in the comment box so I can, get, I can go through them quickly and make sure that I get to your question on time. Once, one lady says, how can you get over someone you really like, but the person doesn't like you back? Okay, I believe we dealt with this on the three mistakes the three common mistakes that are keeping you from a healthy relationship. Like I said, it's very important that you're dating based on where you are going. If the person doesn't like you back, that is not the person for you. Like I said, you don't want to be attracted to someone that is not attracted to you. That is so dangerous because you are going to get stuck and you'll be frustrated. So how can you get over that person? You definitely want someone you can be held accountable, you can, that can hold you accountable. And that's something we do in Wife in Waiting. You want somebody that you can completely be honest with that will show you how to block and delete that person from your life. What I mean by this is if you have the temptation to call them or talk to them or text them, you call that person instead. You text that person instead. Wife in Waiting sisters don't only talk in the group. They talk outside the group. They share um, some wife. In fact, Wife in Waiting sisters meet outside the group. So you have that sisterhood that you can talk to and share with. You definitely want to have accountability. You want to have someone holding you accountable. The second thing you want to do is write down what is making you attracted to that person and why. The reason this is so important is you need to understand what about that person is attractive to you so that you, you are able to know the angle to attack it from. Maybe you're attracted to the person because they remind you of your ex. That means you need to get over your ex and that person will no longer be attractive to you. Maybe you're attracted to that person because they are financially stable. That means financial stability is important to you. So you now know that you need to focus on building your own financial um, stability so that you are not so attracted to a man where you lose focus based on his finances. So definitely get someone that can hold you accountable 
Also write down what is making you attracted to that person and why. So you are also able to know finally where to tackle the issue from. Maybe you're just attracted to them because they are the first man that you've seen that looks like the man that you desire in your own life. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It lets you know that at least those types of men exist. I'm not dreaming. I've seen a man that actually looks like the kind of man I find attractive. And that should be enough information for you to be able to move forward with so that you can position yourself for that kind of man to have access to your life. So there are definitely practical ways to tackle that situation, like I've just said. And nothing, none of this will happen overnight. You also want to distance yourself from that person if they happen to be a close friend. So if, if for instance, you both share the same workspace or you both have the same circle of friends, you want to be consciously making an effort not to engage with that person. And there is no shame in that. So if they call you, you don't want to give them that access anymore because you definitely want to create that space so your emotions get used to the distance. And you also want to make sure that if you, are ha if you happen to see each other in public and have um, spaces that you both tend to visit together, maybe you even work together, you want to make sure that you have other friends in that same space that you can distract yourself with and bond more with so you don't rely on that person as much. That is my advice to you in that situation. Great. So let's see the questions we have here. Oh, we have quite a bit. Um, does the $14 a month encompass the three events that is prayer conventions? Yes, for sure. Everything you are seeing here, everything I've discussed goes under is, is $14 a month. That is 5,100 Naira. IJ will share the link again. Um, that's Ijoma. We call her IJ. She will share the link again. So everything that we do in this community, let me just go back. It's $14. It's not more than that. If you're outside the community, um, you won't have access to all of this on a day, on a consistent basis, as much as if you're a wife and waiting sister. How do you indicate or know the right man? That is a loaded question. And in all honesty, it's not something that I would, um, that I would be able to round up in one conversation because it depends on where you're coming from, your dating history, depends on your own toxic habits that may have affected the kind of men you find attractive. It also depends on what exactly are your expectations of marriage. But in summary, how you know the right man is you know, your, you know God, you know yourself, and you know what God desires for you. That's how you know the right man. In summary, once you know God for yourself, once you know how God sees you, and once you know what God desires for you in marriage, you will know the right man. Um, you talk about block and delete. What if the toxic ex is a colleague or you work closely together? If the toxic ex is a colleague or you work closely together, you can still block and delete them from your life. And how you do this is very simple. If you work closely together, make sure that you have someone else, like I said to the first question, make sure you have someone else in that same circle that you are able to relate with on a close level so you can replace that ex's place. That's what block and delete looks like on an emotional level. So maybe you both share a project together in the office. Instead of going to him, you'll also want to become friends with someone else in that space so that you can start to rely on them instead for information and for, um, you know, for guidance on that particular topic. You also want to make sure that you distance yourself emotionally from the ex. The way you do that is you distract yourself because initially your emotions don't understand direction right now. It's, it's all haywire. It's all confusion. So you want to distract yourself with your friends, a project, an activity, something that requires your time and attention. And this is actually where wife and waiting sisters are actually very valuable because you can just pour out your heart in the group and all the sisters are there to support you and give you practical, applicable advice. But th those are just some steps you can take. How can you do it away with an ex that keeps messaging you just because you don't want to block, and block him and you've already gotten over him, but he keeps messaging? Simple summary of this is you block him again. And um, it doesn't mean that you are a bad person. Wife and waiting sisters are already familiar with me on this. I don't, I don't particularly joke with any of our sisters that has a toxic ex. We don't play with it. In fact, they dedicated a whole sticker, like I said, <laughs> with my face on it. So we block and delete. There's no emotions here. These things are very spiritual. That's what I really try and put in the head of my wife and waiting sisters. We don't joke with exes. 
we had a whole prayer convention dealing with toxic soul ties. We don't give room for the enemy to move. So if he's not t- understanding the message, block him. Um, how much is that figure in Naira? $14 is literally 5,100 Naira. Now, I will say that wife in waiting will increase in price um, at some point in the new year, depending on when you are listening to this. But right now, it's 5,100 Naira for access to all of this. So honestly, it is a community I don't understand um, what you'll be thinking about if you know you need access to this kind of information. Because, and it's one of our, it's 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 our most, one of our most accessible services. That's what I'm trying to say, and we intentionally made it that way because we have a mandate, like I said, to prepare women for a godly marriage. That is the mandate of wife and waiting. So if you can invest five thousand one hundred naira in yourself a month, you will see the value of wife and waiting. We have sisters that have enjoyed this community. Some sisters have brought over their friends to join us in the community because it's it's really so powerful. Um, please, can I get the audio of the class? I had prayer, so I couldn't make the time. Okay, the audio, the replay will go up. So you will have access to the replay for a limited period of time. But wife and waiting sisters will have access to the audio, to the, um, to the audio of the class. Now, is it worth dating someone that doesn't have a job and you have a very good job with good savings, but they have no savings? Is this important? Well, actually going to deal with finances and wife and waiting. It's one of the topics that we're dealing with, but We've discussed this at length in our community already. Um, the truth of the matter is, if savings is important to you, then it is important. Okay, like I said in this particular masterclass, we're not about making you settle. This is a classic example of settling without knowing it. You compromise your values, you compromise what you stand for, all in the name of he's a good man. No, there are good men that take savings seriously. So if it's important to you, it's important. How do you handle the situation where you keep dreaming about your ex, where you guys go back together and you're happy in it? What does that mean? That means you're not over your ex. That means that you definitely need to get over your ex. If you both had some sexual relations, there are soul ties involved. And that's why we dealt with, we had a prayer convention dealing with toxic soul ties. Um, We dealt specifically with soul ties. We had prayer sessions about that. Um, But that's what it means. It doesn't mean you should get back together with your ex. It just means that you are not particularly over your ex. It could mean that, yes, you could get back, but that's not something that I would say lightly because, again, it depends on the relationship. It depends on your history. Do I need to pay that before joining the group? Yes. Before you have access to our community, you have to be a registered member. Um, And like I said, this group closes tomorrow. That is, it closes in the next 24 hours. Okay. Is the amount renewable every month or is it a one-time payment? It's renewable every month, but you are free to cancel, though as sisters hardly cancel. <laughs> you are free to cancel whenever you want, but it is renewable every month. Is wife in waiting just for a month? No, wife in waiting is a consistent sisterhood. We are an ongoing sisterhood. We've been around for over a year. Um, we're an ongoing sisterhood, so it's not a month. It's renewable, like IJ has said. What if you want to break up with your man because you know or feel already that he might not be the one. He doesn't want to meet with my mom or meet his, and we are sexually active. What do you do? He cares a lot, and he doesn't want to leave. The problem right there is sexual activity. Now, like wife and waiting sisters already know, we, we don't compromise with the word. We are very practical modern women, but that doesn't mean we throw away the value of what the word says. Um, and we tell you the truth in love. So sex is on the table that already compromises judgments, that compromises discernment, that compromises standards and values and boundaries. So that's the problem. Um, if you want to break up with your man, you break up with him. There's no two ways about it. Um, and we're very intentional with making sure our sisters are equipped to be able to handle a situation where, oh, you know, he's such a nice man, or, you know, he's so understanding, he's so thoughtful. So maybe, you know, we can make it work. No, we don't stand for that. The truth is you are called to marriage. And the truth in this particular situation is that man is not allowing you to have access to the marriage you've been called to. And that's the perspective we look at it from. That's the perspective I look at it from based on what you shared with me. Um, He doesn't want to meet your parents. Um, You're both sexually active. Um, You already feel he might not be the one. So it's pretty obvious. It's the sex that is compromising your judgment. 
What about those that don't have the money at hand and really want to join? Can something be done? Unfortunately, if you don't have the money at hand, then you will not have, be able to join our community. But I'm sure that if you, um, we've had situations where sisters save up to become a member of our community. If it's very valuable to you, it's, it's, it's accessible. And we intentionally made the fee 5,100 5, naira a month, actually a much more valuable community given the, all the, um, all the um, services we render in our sisterhood. And you can also just check out my page on Instagram. I share tips there on a consistent page, um, basis. You can check out my YouTube channel at Tolufalo Day as well. That is also free. And those are platforms that you can also get more information on. And we'll be ready to welcome you into our community when you are ready. Okay. Now, my ex was really manipulative. I'm going to handle these three questions and then we'll start rounding up. My ex was really manipulative and I can't help seeing myself in a negative light since he left how do i grow out of this we're going to get married okay your ex was really manipulative that is the issue here manipulation is not just emotional it's spiritual as well it compromises the way you see yourself on an emotional level yes but on a spiritual level as well you start to doubt whether you have access to certain things like am i really unattractive maybe he implied you were unattractive you start that you, you start speaking negatively to yourself and that's what that's the reason for that i can't help seeing myself in a negative light you grow out of this by speaking positivity into yourself that's why i said it's not just emotional it's spiritual you speak positivity into yourself you listen to positive messages you you soak yourself in the word the word is very good for cleansing negative energy and toxicity out of your life um, you are going to get married um, and God saved you from a very manipulative marriage. That's the perspective you want to look at it from. And I understand you're in a difficult place. Um, I would recommend accountability, someone that you can definitely talk to, someone that you can definitely share with that will be there for you. And like I said, this is something we offer in the sisterhood as well. Is it advisable to date a guy whose older brothers are not married and ex even expect marriage from him? I don't particularly understand this question completely, but from what I understand, you are saying, is it advisable to date a guy whose older brothers are not married? So what I mean, what I understand by this is you want to date a guy whose older brothers are not married, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing stopping you from dating a guy whose older brothers are not married. That, that has nothing to do with the guy. Um, and this is something we do in the community. This is what I mean by not having access to enough information to make the right decision. His older brother is not being married does not stop him from being ready for marriage. Um, that's not something that you want to hinder your judgment. I'm not saying he's the right one or he's the wrong one. I'm just saying this is not the right perspective to handle it from. When you sign up for the group and make the payment, how do you gain access? Immediately, once you sign up for the sisterhood with the link that IJ will share again, once you um, register as a member, I just get your details and you're added to the group within, in fact, within less than 24 hours. The, you say you sign up today, you'll be added before the end of tonight. You'll be added to the group and you'll be added, you have access to the sisterhood. Um, like Deborah has said as well, I add you or the community manager um, of wife and wedding, but I, I would add you as well. There's accountability here, like Deborah has said. So great. I believe I've, I've answered your questions. Now, what I'm going to say is um, you guys, because you stayed this far into the meeting, the masterclass, you have access to the sneak peek of our wife and wedding devotional. And IJ has already shared it. No, she's going to share it now. She just shared the link to join our sisterhood. She's going to share now the link to get access to a sneak peek of the wife and wedding devotional that is already out. Now, in this devotional, I share with you on sex, standards, boundaries, and you get a sneak peek into it when you join, um, when you click the link that will be available in the chat box right now. IJ has put it there. Now, let me be clear. You don't get access to the devotional in the wife in waiting community. I share relationship tips in the community because I don't want a situation where someone says, I thought I got access. No, the devotional comes separately, but it is a devotional for wives in waiting, right? Like I said, our mandate is clear. 
we are a community of women that prepare you for a godly marriage. So once you click that link that IJ has just shared, you get access to a sneak peek of our wife in waiting devotional. Now again, this um, to join our sisterhood, it closes in 24 hours. You get access to relationship tips, guest speakers, powerful prayers, daily conversations that we all have in the group. We literally meet every day. In fact, we met tonight. Um, the group is, cur is currently open and the girls are even chatting a bit on the group right now. Um, we have events. We have a book club and it's 5,100 Naira a month. That's $14. Now that rate will possibly probably go up in the near future. So I hope to see you in the sisterhood. I'm so glad that you joined us here tonight. Thank you for joining. Check the chat box for a link to join Wife in Waiting. If you're still interested in becoming one of our sisters, then just check the chat box for a link to join Wife in Waiting. Or you can email me at tolu at tolufalode.com to make sure that you are a member of our community. And I'll answer you right away. We close in 24 hours. I hope you all enjoyed this masterclass. And we kept our promise to an extent. It was, we spent 94, 94 minutes. So we've definitely kept our promise um, and we are done. And I'm so glad that um, all of you joined us tonight. I hope to see you in the sisterhood. Um, and I love the fact that you all found this information useful. We close in 24 hours. If you have any questions for me, um, I'm going to be happy to, um, if you have any questions for me about the sisterhood, just send me an email at tulu at tulufalode.com or check the chat box. IJ would have shared the link. Um, and she also shared the link to the wife in waiting devotional sneak peek. So see you ladies, hopefully in our community. Um, in our sisterhood, we're very excited to welcome you in and help you get, um, help you get clear. If you have a request, I'm seeing someone say there was a request for a coupon code. Um, just deny it. There's no coupon code. If you have a request for a coupon code, there's no coupon code. Just make sure you register for our community and you'll get access. It's really that simple. And even if you've attempted, if you have any issues, just send me an email at tolu at tolufalode. Dot com and I'll be more than happy to help you out. It's very simple to become a member of this community. Okay, ladies, good night. Wife and waiting sisters, see you in the WhatsApp group right now. Bye.